You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are talking uh, theology, yes. worship. Love it. Psalms. Yes. All because the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Sacred Church Music is coming up like, what, in just a few months this summer. Very July, soon. Yeah. Uh, taking place in Seward, Nebraska. And we're going to dig into this with uh, a great topic today with Dr. Boyle from Concordia, Fort Wayne in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, Dr. Jeffrey Boyle, Assistant Professor of Pastoral Ministry and Missions at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's also one of the keynote speakers at the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music, taking place in Seward, Nebraska, this summer, July 9th through the 12th. Dr. Boyle, welcome to the Coffee Hour. It's a joy to be with you. It's been quite a while since we've had a chance to chat, and I am pretty excited about today's conversation because we're talking the Psalms, theology, worship, Mm -hmm. all these things, which you're going to be digging into even more in-depthly at the Institute this summer. So if if you're listening today and you enjoy the conversation, you want to check out the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music taking place this summer. All right, Dr. Boyle, you are one of the keynote speakers, and we're digging into Psalms at this Institute this year. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about Psalms. Before we even get to Psalms, let's talk about worship. What what is worship all about? What is the pattern or posture of faithful Christian worship? Oh, that's great. We chatted just briefly before about the little introduction in Lutheran worship, where you have this beautiful image of the Lord who has gifts to give, and we are in great need to receive them. And so when the Lord speaks, we listen, we hear, and then we respond accordingly with thanksgiving and joy. And as far as that goes, the Psalms are a great entree into Lutheran worship. It is the Lord that speaks, and we respond with thanksgiving. And so the whole movement of the Psalter is one of worship, of receiving, and of giving thanks. Let's flesh that out a little bit. How do we see that played out in the Psalms? What are some examples of how that, how we see that happening in the Psalms? Sure. In general, I mean, there is this great movement through the Psalter. And so we normally look at the Psalms as all individual standing Psalms, like individual prayers here. And, and we pick and choose the ones we like or the ones that we need at the time. But, but there is actually a movement throughout the Psalter that begins with the first, well, the majority of the psalms at the beginning are all psalms of lament. And it's recognizing how we are in this world as those sinners in need of God's mercy. And we cry out to him, whether it's in confession, whether it's because we've got enemies around us, and and whether we're just suffering from the effects of this world. And yet, as we move through the Psalter, we actually move from lament to praise. And it is interesting that the book of Psalms in Hebrew is Tehillim, which is the praises of God. And as you start reading through the Psalter, you wouldn't you wouldn't know it necessarily as the praises of God, but as you move through and you get to the end, there's this overwhelming hallelujah that ends up bringing out and bringing us to the end of this praise of God that is unfettered and ready to just burst into the world. If if maybe reading the Psalms or digging into the Psalms is kind of new to us, maybe you, let's just presume maybe you skim over it because it doesn't always make sense. I'm like not always sure who's speaking. So maybe digging into the Psalms for the first time, what's your advice when looking at the Psalms, particularly looking at the Psalter for what it means for us as worship and maybe advice for someone digging into it for the first time, really? Sure. Deeply. Mm-hmm. No, I, and I think this is a huge question. The The first thing that I always point out is that there are always three prayers of the Psalms. I don't mean three individual prayers. I mean three different prayers, those that are taking these words on their lips. And the first, which is, I think, the hardest to kind of get to, but I think is the most important, is that these Psalms are first and foremost the prayers of Jesus Christ. They're his prayers, his prayer to the Father, standing on our behalf and pleading with him for us. So that'll take a little unpacking as we go through. Some psalms are far more obvious that way. For instance, Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? None of us thinks that's first and foremost our prayer. 
it's Jesus on the cross, and yet we in our suffering may, may find ourselves joined to him. So he's the first prayer of the Psalms. Secondly, and probably the most immediate to us, is that this is a prayer that has taken place historically. Uh, oftentimes we simply say it's the prayer of David. And so there's a historical situation that makes it a little difficult for us at times because we don't always know what the circumstance is that has led him to that prayer. But but nonetheless, we see them as someone else's prayers, so to speak. And then only thirdly, do we take them up on our lips because we find that in the Psalter, there is a prayer for every emotion, for every circumstance in life. And so in all of these, we are looking for particular Psalms that match or give us the words to pray in our particular need. So if we could step back and say that there are three prayers and Jesus is always praying first, that immediately draws us into then the prayer of the Son to the Father. And from there, we see that these prayers have led the people of God from the days of David, or in some cases, like Psalm 90, Moses, uh, all the way through the church's life until today. So then how do we, knowing this, that there are these three prayers, how do we use that then in our in our daily rhythm of life? Well, I, I really think that these psalms are to be the daily prayers of Christians. Uh, not only do they appear in our liturgy, but but they should be our our daily prayer. There are, there are a couple ways of doing this, of course. One I've already mentioned is that when we're in need, these give us the words to pray. So we might look for a particular psalm. To get there, though, because if we don't know the Psalter, we don't know where to go. And so to have a rhythm or a, a habit of prayer to go through the Psalter on a regular basis, I think would be a very good practice devotionally for us. And there are a number of ways to do it. There are, in our hymnal, suggested prayers to pray through the week. But there's also, I think for me, a simpler way, and that is, I can't do math all that well, but I do know that if I do five psalms a day, I get through the Psalter every month. And I could just keep working my way through and finding that every Every day I could just pick up and, and pray the next five psalms and, and work my way through. When I get 31 days in a month, that allows me time to go back to Psalm 119 and, and try to pick up where I've missed. What? So that sounds like a, a good idea for a daily practice. Can you give us an example of what that might look like, what that looks like for you, and maybe how that might be useful in the average layperson's daily life as well when you pray that? Yeah, well, I think the average layperson can just as well pick up the Psalter. It's in every Bible and and pray through these. I think one of the challenges is maybe not knowing what it means. Mm -hmm. And yet the more you go through them, the more the words start forming how we think, maybe even subconsciously, but but that could be aided by memorizing certain Psalms. And so I think some psalms are well worth just storing in our memory and practicing daily. One of the ones that I think is certainly worthwhile is Psalm 1. And if we started there, that kind of gives us, I mean, there's a good reason why it's Psalm 1, but it gives us a way to enter into the whole Psalter. And I like to think of both Psalms 1 and 2 as together, maybe the the great doorway in, you know, you've got these two doors that open you up and they give you everything you really need to understand the Psalter. So maybe it would be worthwhile to just look at Psalm 1, for instance, as a start and seeing how praying Psalm 1 and learning that by heart opens up the rest of the Psalter and how we might begin to understand it. Does that sound all right? Sounds yeah. great. Great. Uh, Psalm 1, and one of Maybe a minor thing to note is that many of the Psalms, not all of them, but many of them have a little superscription at the top. Sometimes in our Bibles, it looks like like a, a smaller superscript text, and it just gives us 
direction, sometimes an author, sometimes the tune to sing it by. I mean, I don't know what these tunes necessarily sound like, but but whoever put them together did. Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 do not have a superscription, which leads us to maybe think that they're they're introductory and they're leading you into the whole whole psalter. But let's let's start with Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Okay. This immediately leads us to seeing two groups, where one man and the others. Blessed is the man immediately invites us to ask, who is that man? Who is the one that doesn't you know, walk in the way or the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of scoffers. Is it me? Is it someone I know? Or is it our Lord Jesus? He is the blessed man. He is the one that is truly righteous. And he alone delights in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. So the psalm is presenting us with this blessed man right from the get-go and contrasting with him all those who are not like him. And we see their judgment. They're like chaff that the wind drives away. But the Lord, the Blessed One, is the one who stands, who's firmly planted, and who is known by the Lord. He will not perish. This blessed man then will appear throughout the Psalter. The the blessed will be throughout the Uh, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And we start to see then that our prayer, our taking up these psalms on our own lips, is our joining in what this blessed man does and who he is. And so the blessed man then becomes, well, it becomes us, as we are also bound in and brought together with Jesus before the Father. So I think this first psalm helps us to meditate day and night on the law of the Lord, to have his word always before us, to establish a rhythm of prayer, and to find that these words given to us as a gift from God are then spoken back to him, which is again going back to that rhythm of worship that we spoke about at the beginning. We're learning about the Psalms and Psalms in Worship with the Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Boyle, Assistant Professor of Pastoral Ministry and Missions at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne. He's also one of the keynote speakers at the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music taking place July 9th through the 12th in Seward, Nebraska this summer. We're going to learn more in just a moment about the Psalms right here on The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Sharing our faith can sometimes be hard, especially face-to-face. That's one of the reasons KFUO is here, to share God's Word globally on your behalf and to equip you with the knowledge, confidence, and words to share Jesus yourself. This share make a gift to KFUO Radio so we can continue sharing Christ to the world. Donate online at kfuo.org slash share That's kfuo.org slash share
Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Our guest today, the Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Boyle, Assistant Professor of Pastoral Ministry and Missions at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's also one of the keynote speakers at the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music, taking place July 9th through 12th in Seward, Nebraska. You can learn more about it by visiting lcms.org slash worship institute. We are digging into Psalms with Dr. Boyle today, and that really is the theme of the the Institute this summer as well. Going to learn quite a bit about the Psalter and how that serves us in worship. How would you say the Psalms, or or what would you say the Psalms reveal about our Lord? That's great. One of the things they reveal about the Lord is, I think, found in the conclusion of Luther's explanation of the Lord's Prayer. There he tells us that in praying the Lord's Prayer, we should be certain that these prayers are pleasing to our Father in heaven and are heard by him. The Lord's Prayer might be considered a summary of the Psalter, or the Psalter might be a broad explanation and pulling apart of the Lord's Prayer, so that all of the Lord's Prayers found in the Psalter and all of the Psalms are find their way in a a very small way into the Lord's Prayer. They're his words to us, and so we know that they're pleasing to him, for he himself has commanded us to pray in this way and has promised to hear us. And because of that, we find out who he is in these prayers. We find out that he's righteous, that he's merciful, he's gracious. We find that he's the blessed one, as we talked about earlier, that he reigns, especially in the midst of our enemies, that he has triumphed victoriously. And part of this is the revelation that comes by way of the Psalter. You know, many of the early Christians would speak of David as a prophet, that these Psalms are prophecies. They're they're the words of God to man, and then are taken up by men and given back to God. And as such, they reveal something about who he is. I think Psalm 2 is a great, I mentioned this is maybe the twin door, but one of the things Psalm 2 does is it reveals to us the fact that he's already set his Christ on Zion. So as we look at the world, we see the raging of the enemies, we see the kings of the earth plotting against the church, and it could lead us to, to fear, perhaps even despair. And of course, there are loads of psalms that lament the situation we're in. And yet, Psalm 2 has this beautiful image of, in the midst of all of the raging of enemies against Christ and against his church, it says that the Lord sits in the heavens and he laughs, and he holds them all in derision. And so he will speak to them, and in his speaking, he declares that he has set his king on Zion his holy hill. For us, this is great confidence because we now know that no matter what we see in this world, we have a Lord that has already triumphed victoriously. He's already set all of his enemies uh, in the dust. He's already brought his judgment about. And we then, we who kiss the Son, who know and believe in Jesus Christ, find that victory for ourselves as well. You mentioned this connection between the Psalms and the Lord's Prayer. Where else do we find these, I don't know if echoes is the right word, the, these, these parts of the Psalms throughout the rest of our liturgy and, that, and the, the rhythm of our worship life? Good. Well, the Psalms actually form our liturgy, uh, especially you think of the minor offices of Matins and Vespers. They are, they are the Psalms, and they were services meant to pray the Psalms. And so we begin, O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. That's straight from Psalm 51. And make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. This is Psalm 70. We get that rhythm then, that prayer, that, that petitioning, that pushing towards the Father and asking him to come quickly and to save us. So there's that aspect that that's the rhythm, the morning and evening of our worship. But then In our divine liturgy on Sundays, especially, we have often an introit or an entrance into the into the chancel as the pastor is going up the steps. This is all based off of the Psalms of Ascent, which we'll find in Psalms one twenty to one thirty four, 
and they're the the prayers of the people of Israel that God gave them as they're going up Mount Zion, going into the the sanctuary to worship and confess his name. So that that rhythm, that structure, that form, and the very words are all given to us now to pick up as we also share in their entrance into the holy place by way of the words of God. I want to go back to something you shared earlier about praying the Psalms daily and I think looking at how the the Psalms have shaped our worship as well, Matin's morning prayer, things like that, the the examples that you just gave. How then, through having the the Psalter in our daily lives, whether it's praying it individually or praying it corporately with uh, the body of Christ, with our congregation, with our families, how does the Psalter then shape or form us when we're, we're hearing it, we're praying it daily? Great. Uh, the same way as the Word of God does generally. So the more the Word of God is what forms our mind or thinking, it gives us language to speak. Not only that, but the Psalms themselves, one of the fun things to do is you're reading through the Psalter. And there are a number of ways, little tips that I would suggest as you're going through. One, one is to go through a Psalm in See if it's an I or a you or a we and an our sort of psalm. That is, is this a an individual psalm, which many of them are. Many are my own prayers, my own desires, my needs. But then that moves us into psalms that are communal, where where it's we. This is our God that we are worshiping. And so we recognize that we are not alone in the praying of the psalms that we are joined together not only with Christ, but then with the whole body of the church. And so our voices are with other voices offering these same prayers to the Father. Why is this important? I know we've kind of been talking about that, but why does this matter so much for us that we should want to dive into these and really start reading these psalms, incorporating them into that daily rhythm of our lives? Good. Uh, One of the things that I like about praying the Psalms orderly, like just one through five, six through 10, and and moving my way through them is because they are often prayers that I don't necessarily know that I need at the moment. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer, I think, is a great help in terms of thinking through the prayer of the Psalms. He's got a little book, Psalms, the Prayer Book of the Bible. and in that he speaks of the fact that the heart doesn't always know what it wants or needs, and the word of God is that which determines our prayer. Some of these psalms, then, we may be praying, and we may not feel like we need that psalm at the moment, and yet in our prayer, we're actually praying on behalf of another, praying for the church, and someone does need that psalm. Sometimes it causes us to slow down and to stop and ask, who is this for? Who do I know in my life that needs this prayer? Who who needs to know God reigns? Who is it that needs this confession? Who is it that needs God's comfort and compassion and the forgiveness of sins, which are all throughout? And so I love the fact that they are they're always practical, whether I immediately recognize how or not. What are you looking forward to most at the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music this summer? I'm looking forward to praying all of the Psalms. That's one one of the goals that they have for this conference, and I think it's it's great. You know, St. Benedict, when he put together his rule for his monks, said that he was going to have them praying through the entire Psalter every week because he just didn't think they were strong enough to do it every day. Now, That's pretty rigorous and ambitious, and I'm pretty pleased if I get through the whole Psalter every month. But at the same time, to have a a week conference where all of all of the worship services are going to be centered on the Psalms, where all of the the lectures, the talks, the breakout sessions, everything is ordered towards praying through the Psalter as our prayer book, which it is, and maybe helping others to recover that practice and whether it's personal piety or by way of the churches themselves integrating the Psalms 
more and more into their worship life. Our guest today, Dr. Jeffrey Boyle, Assistant Professor of Pastoral Ministry and Missions at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Also a keynote speaker at the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music, taking place July 9th through 12th in Seward, Nebraska. You can learn more by visiting lcms.org slash worship institute. Dr. Boyle, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning on the Coffee Hour. It's been just a delight to dig into this topic of the Psalms. Oh, it was great. I just wish we had more time. (laughs) Same. (laughs) You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.